Hello, and welcome to the Sunday meditation at the Light Institute of Galisteo and the Sanctuary of Light. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, we divide our meditation into three parts. In the first part, we ask our divine higher self to take a form for us so that our consciousness can align to that energy in us that's beyond our small vision of who we are. So we ask it to take form, we ask our higher self to touch our body, uh, we bring the higher self into our body and we sit in meditation. I'll make a little om sound so that you can push the button on your apparatus and meditate for as long as you like. In the second part of the meditation, we reach up into the cosmos with our imagination and we pull down a beautiful beam of pure white light down through the top of our heads, down into our stomach, our solar plexus. This is the center of our emotional body. And from there we laser that light out across the planet and back into the sky. And we just continue that form of breathing. We breathe in, we draw the light down, we exhale, we laser it out across the planet and back up into the cosmos. And that takes us into a very peaceful and deep meditative state. In the third part of the meditation, each week uh, people suggest um, how we could take our, our meditative energies and extend it out into the world. This week, we're going to extend energy through our hearts. We're going to look for the frequency of light, the color that will open the human heart so that we can realize that through our hearts, we communicate, we connect, and we know each other. And that is what will, more than anything else, begin to bring peace to our world. When we can we can truly feel through our hearts our connection and our belonging to every other human. And so that's the way we will do this. And we'll begin with a little breathing uh, first. So close your eyes. Now breathe in through your nose and hold at the top for a moment and then exhale very slowly through your mouth. This allows you to move into a meditative state parasympathetic state. Once again, breathe in through your nose and exhale slowly through your mouth. Ask your higher self to take form. It's the intuitive essence of your soul. It's your own inner voice and wisdom. Whatever form it takes, it could be a rainbow, a light, a being, a tree, an animal, an equation. Ask it to take a form for you at this moment. Now, ask your higher self to touch your body where you hold your divine essence at this moment. And just imagine that touch. It could be anywhere in your body. Ask it to touch you, to activate that divine essence. Bring your conscious awareness into that place that your higher self has touched. And take a deep breath and breathe in and out through that place, opening it. And now draw your higher self in through that point, linked to your divine essence. And sit in meditation with your higher self. Om. Reach up into the cosmos and imagine that you are pulling down a beautiful beam of pure white light down to the top of your head, calling it, magnetizing it through you and to you, down into your stomach, your solar plexus, and from there, laser that pure white light, the fastest frequency, out across our planet to awaken that quickening back up into the cosmos. We do this with our breath. Breathe in, draw the white light down. Exhale. Laser it out across the planet.
back up into the sky and just continue to do that for as long as you like. Om. Imagine you could bring all of humanity into your mind's eye and ask humanity what frequency of light will communicate and activate the opening of the human heart to connect, to recognize, to belong. And just imagine that all of humanity is showing you a frequency, a color. See what that color is at this moment that will activate and, and allow us to wield the highest octave of the human heart for the healing of ourselves, each other, and our planet. Now again, reach up into the cosmos and pull exactly that color of light down through the top of your head, down into your solar plexus, and laser that beautiful light out. And imagine that as it streams into all of the eight point more <laughs> billion people on this planet, that they are receiving that color that they asked for. And that as they take that color in individually and collectively, the human heart grows and expands and connects. Just continue that, drawing it down, extending it out to humanity and feeling that our beautiful human hearts are awakening to their true potential Take a deep breath into your body and open your eyes. Oh, thank you. We do have a second part to our Sunday meditations. It's called Knowings. And people from around the world send to us questions that they would like for us to focus upon in order to uplift ourselves and illuminate uh, these conversations, all of us who are joining. And Alison today will tell us the, the questions that have come this week. Alison? The first question is from La Jolla, California in the USA. Dear Chris, please tell me the best foods and products for lifting the spirits and relaxing the body. I will not take drugs for this, but I could sure use a little boost to help my combated emotions due to what's happening in the world. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, there are so many. There are so many, I couldn't name them all, but I'll give you just a couple that I love. Uh, the first one is called ashwagandha, and it's a beautiful a root, it's a beautiful herb that uh, balances the body, balances the emotions, and relaxes us. It takes away tension and stress, and it has been found to be so valuable for people who are feeling, as so many of us are, uh, the, the anxiety of what's going on on the planet. By taking the ashwagandha, you can relax your consciousness and your body so that you can see clearly how you can participate in a higher octave through your consciousness, through the beauty of your heart, how uh, you can extend energies that help you to realize that you have a purpose on this planet at this time. We have come together. And by bringing that anxiety level down and lifting up the energy of the heart, which is what ashwagandha is so good at doing, it will just bring that lovely capacity to you. Another thing that I use a lot that I feel is very important are pure essential oils because they have an electrical quality that, that really activates higher energies in our own bodies, which are of course electrical as well. And if I were picking one right now, I would pick um, lavender. It's one you all know about. But putting lavender over your heart, for example, we know that lavender helps us to sleep, but it also helps us to relax. Again, like ashwagandha, these things that relax us, and especially with ashwagandha, it activates the neurotransmitters, which are actually made in our, in our intestines, where we often really squeeze when we're anxious. And 
of the neurotransmitters serotonin and L-dopa. And those are the ones that tranquilize us. Those are the ones that, above all, make us feel happy. And we need that. Uh, then another one that does make people happy, that does the same thing because it activates that, that uh, uh, serotonin and L-dopa, is cacao. Now, cacao is the unroasted coffee um, uh, chocolate bean. <laughs> uh, and it, it is a wonderful uh, feeding to the body. It feeds flavonoids that, it, that again affect the emotional body, affect the nervous system. Uh, but it, everyone, I think, loves chocolate. But I'm not talking about just having a chocolate bar because it has so much sugar in it. But the powdered pure cacao can be mixed with milk or you could make something out of it. Um, you can make all kinds of wonderful things out of it. I do. And, and then you're, you're getting something that is so nourishing to the brain. And again, if our brain is relaxing, if our brain is, is accessing these higher neurotransmitter energies, it makes us happy. When we are happy, we relax. When we are happy, we, we can kind of see that there's, there are so many ways that uh, we can go forward, that life goes on. And so I would just mention those. There are so many more. But one thing I would say is that anytime you take something, and I'm glad that you point out that there are ways that nature has given us besides chemicals to uh, support our happiness, our relaxation, and uplifting of our spirits, that if you hold something in your hands, if you think of it this way, this is for you, body. It will really amplify uh, the capacity of whatever that is to uplift you. Now Allison will tell us the second question. The second question is from London, England. I am a professional athlete and I'm having a very serious career moral issue. I'm thinking of quitting because competition or beating others has begun to seem unkind and archaic. I would be so grateful for your thoughts on this. Oh, do not quit. Do not quit because imagine that when you do something, whatever it is that you do do, there are probably lots of people watching you and they are inspired by your body's capacity and it helps them to, to want that inside themselves, especially the next generation, especially children. They're looking for physical templates and you are one of them. And there is a way out of this problem and that is that this idea of competition can be shifted through your consciousness. Instead of seeing the others as the ones you have to beat, two parts. First, um, let them go and think about your beating your best record, that you are encouraging your own body, just like you would be encouraging other people, children and others, to try to go beyond what they think is their limit. And so, come on body, you can do this. Let's do something new and even best ourselves today. So if you hold it about you, winning for you, for your body's capacity to teach you that you can go on better and better, higher and higher, faster and faster, that will save a lot. And the second part of that that I really love is seeing your opponents, not as the ones you have to beat, not as the maybe even the negative competition that you might feel coming from them, but rather as soul friends uh, who are helping you to do your best. So they're really, in a way, they're your cheerleaders, they're your coaches, they're the ones that are saying, okay, this is what I can do, can you do better? And I'll help you just by my presence because I'm running alongside you, I'm swimming alongside you, I'm jumping alongside you, whatever it is that you're doing, that their presence stimulates in you uh, an awakening. It, it, it reminds you to focus, it reminds, it's, it's helping you, actually, to do your best. So see them as your friends helping you. And the second part of that is to send color to them. Because when color is the language of communication throughout the cosmos, everything is made of light. So when you gather in your mind's eye all of your opponents in a race or whatever it is, and you ask them what frequency of light they need to do their best, and then you draw that in from the cosmos and extend it out to them. That will help you to erase this 
feeling of um, somehow I'm hurting them. You're not hurting each other. Actually, as a group, you are a group template that is inspiring the rest of us. And so think of it that way, that the better they do, the better you will do. Uh, not to beat them, but because you are, you are activating in each other to go forward, to do it better, and to push your bodies. And your bodies, because you've chosen this and your bodies are good at it, your bodies want to be pushed. So if you take away all of the chatter uh, that sometimes comes from coaches, from other people, you've got to do it, you've got to beat them. No, you have to do what you've never done before. So every time you begin to think, my body is going to do with me better than we have ever done before. And they will help me by reminding me, by pushing me, and I pushing them. So I think that's the way to do it. Don't quit. Simply shift your consciousness in the way that you look at it. You're not hurting anyone except um, squeezing yourself. We need your template. Be that for everyone. Allison? The last question is from Cairo, Egypt. Chris, the whole world feels polluted right now with chaos. Will you kindly give an exercise in consciousness to bring in the light to cleanse the chaos? Mm. Yes, there is chaos. The chaos is there because we don't know which way to go. Because we, we have trouble uh, linking up to our higher selves, becoming centered. And so we would wish that everyone could actually realize that you have an inner voice, an intuitive essence of your soul, uh, a powerful wisdom within you, so that you can choose. When, when you choose a direction, you choose a direction, and that might seem like it brings more chaos, great, shift your direction. We have that capacity to do that. And so what I would say is that chaos, which just simply means that there are all these possibilities and all of these interlinked uh, actions and reactions karma, going on, that we could find that place of centeredness uh, that would bring us clarity into what is the direction that will uh, release that. So what I would say is what my higher self always whispers to me, whatever you're feeling or seeing or experiencing inside is outside. And because it's outside, you're feeling it inside. So there's this, this interplay between what's inside you and what's outside you. So if we want to help the chaos in the planet, that we don't know which direction we're going, but we know we need to go somewhere, especially in terms of our of our Earth, our beloved Earth and our environment. We have the intelligence to do this. And so what I would say is, if you center yourself so that the chaos is not overwhelming you, so that if you feel that you have a centeredness and you can look out upon the chaos and see that it's providing a lot of possibles, and then realize that through your own wisdom you can select the ones that serve the higher good, then you will be, as in my Echelon group, which I hope you can join, um, an agent of change. So it's what we do in our lives that makes a difference in the world. So let's do that exercise to find that point of center and so that the center uh, is stronger than the bombardment of chaos. And that is what we were doing in the beginning of our meditation. It's all about the direction of energy. If you are centered and you are therefore putting out a peaceful and clear energy that, yes, there are all of these things going on, uh, but I can feel how I move through them, then uh, that, that will ripple out and influence everyone. Close your eyes. Again, take a deep breath into your body your nose and exhale slowly, extending out your auric field, extending out your energy. And now ask your body where it's holding that overwhelm of chaos. And you might hear a place or see it or feel it. Just focus on that chaos and it might be all over you. Ask your body what color it needs to dissolve that chaos within you. You don't have to take the chaos from outside you in you. There, 
There's a way to heal that, and this is it. So see, or hear, or know the color that will dissolve the chaos. Laser it directly into that place in your body, or all over your body, that's, that is filled with chaos, overwhelmed by chaos, and let the power of light, which is the source of all, to just wash it away. You don't have to carry it. You can participate through clarity. So feel it being washed away by that color of light. And now, ask your higher self that we access in the first part of our meditation to touch a place in your body that will bring centeredness, that is a point of centeredness at this moment. Centeredness means that there is a strong core that can look out, direction of energy, can look out in the world, see the chaos, and, and offer up energies towards that chaos to heal it. Again, the law of energy, extending the energy out rather than sucking it in. So see where your body is holding at this moment, that core of potential centeredness. And bring your consciousness into that place. It could be anywhere. And now feel the energy of centeredness. It's calm. It's expanded. It has a kind of clarity. It's not squeezing. It has to be this way or that way. It's just a point of peace because it holds all that is and the potential of what will be through your power of centeredness. Just breathe into that. Command the trillions of cells of your body to begin to feel and access that centeredness as if it could flow through the trillions of cells of your body. That this is who you are in the midst of anything. Your presence here can focus on the centeredness. And again, as that flows through your body, extend that centeredness out into the world and feel that you're just extending it like, as if you were seeding that possibility that others could find their own centeredness so that they could relax so that they could feel clarity, so they could feel purpose. Out into the world. And take a deep breath and open your eyes. It is true that what you do in your consciousness ripples out from you and does make a change. So I hope that you will all practice that, those two elements of that exercise again and again, and especially when you're going to bed at night so that you sleep peacefully and you wake up in the morning with that sense of, here I am, uh, life is good, I have a purpose, the purpose of my centered presence. Great love to each and all of you.